I, am, I apologize, I do not have you on my list. Daniel was the last person I had, and I sure. didn't get a notice, so. Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson, okay, yes. cool. And I'm with Piedmont Healthcare. Piedmont Healthcare, okay, cool. Yeah, you're on the list for later, so let me just zip down. It looks like they put you in here. Okay, yeah, Noel got you. It says Zen Master here, so the expectation <laughs> level just went way up high. All right, well, hopefully <laughs> I can deliver. <laughs> Fantastic, so how long have you guys been working with Tableau? Uh, so, personally, I think it's been about five years. Um, and I got introduced to Tableau while I was still at Piedmont, and okay. I was the first user of Tableau at Piedmont. Uh, officially, I guess we've been running Tableau as a kind of the enterprise standard BI program for a little over three years, I believe, at this point. Okay. So it's definitely uh, grown substantially since uh, my one single license to cool. where it is today. And it's not you. you uh appear to, to be like me, you've probably used other analytics products before and other stuff before Tableau. What were some of the things that you yeah. used and, and why did you, did you guys end up starting on Tableau? So prior to my life at Piedmont, I was a consultant for six years with yep. KPMG, so I ran into lots of business intelligence tools yep. and um, knew a lot about them. I, in my job, I found myself just using Excel all the time when I was a consultant. Yep. Um, it was a tool that got the job done. It was kind of the Swiss Army knife of BI tools, and I loved it, so I, I got really into it. And when I moved into my role at Piedmont, I was in project management and business development, found myself doing lots of analytical work and doing it all in Excel. And I was good with it. I could create macros and really automate a lot of it, but I got to a place where all I was ever doing anymore was just maintaining the stuff I built. I couldn't really move on to new insight and um, so that's kind of where Tableau made the introduction. I, I needed some, something had to give. I wasn't able to keep up anymore. Absolutely, that's something like repeatedly in all the threads of the conversations we've had so far, people say it's not just a tool to make you more efficient, it's to help you ask questions that you didn't even know you wanted to ask. Yeah, um, absolutely. And that sounds like that. What, what were some of the things that, some of the insights that it brought to you while working at Piedmont that you don't think you would have, have you know, stumbled yeah. across otherwise? It, it certainly facilitates a lot of ad hoc questions. Uh, one of the first things that I did with it was was kind of take the work that I'd done previously in Excel and just migrate it onto Tableau and just see how it would work. Yep. And what it did is uh, one of the, the projects that I had in Excel was something that let us track throughput through our catheterization and yep. electrophysiology lab. So cath would be somebody like has a heart attack and they come get a stent um, or EP or electrophysiology is a pacemaker um, getting an implant like that. So we had issues just getting throughput through those labs and I was using Excel to kind of track where all the bottlenecks were in the process. <clears throat> so I could only do that really once a month. It took me four hours to put together the analysis and wow. hopefully nobody asked me a question about it wow. or said, this doesn't look quite right and then I've got to go back and do a bunch of rework or right. ask for additional insight when something's red on a scorecard and they want to know why. That means I've got to go do a bunch more work. When I started migrating that to Tableau, I'd walk in to the meeting with a dashboard connected to the data sources. And so if they asked a question, I could pivot on the fly and I could immediately answer the question they had. And they would ask another question. I said, well, what, we could just drop this here and we can answer that question. So instead of having these long cycle times of weeks to get answers to questions, a lot of times those questions could be answered in the meeting. So that had a huge impact and the ability to ask a lot more intelligent questions and get a lot of insight as to what's going on in the, in the process. Right, right. And like everybody you know, raves about Tableau, you can sit down with it in five minutes, understand what it's about, do, be doing something useful within an hour. Um, but to get to Zen Master level, <laughs> what, what do you think sets you, what, what are some of the more advanced features that you find yourself using that maybe folks yeah. uh, will not happen across right away that are really powerful? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I get asked the question about the, the Zen Master thing. I think I got in at the right time, <laughs> to be honest. They have it right here, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, I think that Tableau wasn't quite as big um, back then. It's okay. obviously grown substantially in the, in the last several years. I mean, just look at the number of attendees that are coming to the conferences. Sure. Now, the first one I went to, I think there were 2,000 people at it. And so I did announce 10,000 people this year. Right. So I think I got it at the right time and just started um, pushing content out that I was doing and just made myself visible. And I stalked the developers, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to know them really well. That's probably how I actually got to be a Zen master. But right. um, yeah, I think. I've always wanted to push the envelope and, and see what we could do with the tool, you know, yep. kind of eke all the performance that we can get out of it, leverage the, all the tool set. Yep. And when I first um, decided this was something that was going to be huge, after I'd you know, gone to these meetings and realized how fast I could answer these questions, yeah. I said, we should be doing this as a whole for the organization. And thankfully, I got some buy-in. Um, and so when I, I figured out this was going to be big, I read the manual. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> so I know as boring as that sounds, <laughs> it, it helped me really understand at a deep level how Tableau works. Yeah. And that really kind of accelerated my development. Totally, and it seems like they're iterating so quickly, they just announced the keynote this morning that they plan on spending more in R&D over the next two years than they spent in the last 10 years. Yeah. That's going to be a lot of innovation. That's going to yeah, be a lot exciting. of new things like visible. It's exciting, but on the flip side of that, how do you, how do you what, what tools or websites or uh, practices do you use on, on an ongoing basis just to tread water and, and keep abreast of what's going on? Yeah, you mean as a whole or just kind of within the Tableau community? That's a good question, isn't it? <laughs> Everything's accelerating, but inside yeah. of Tableau particularly, are there yeah. particular websites or do you follow mm -hmm. particular individuals? Or? I actually started a thing, uh, a reblogging site um, okay. of my own just to keep up with cool. everything that was going on. I, I started keeping all the different blogs that were going on within the Tableau community inside of Feedly, and I pushed um, Feedly out to Tumblr. Okay. And so now I just connect the Tumblr and I, I read all the different content that people are streaming. And there's more than 100 people that are blogging about Tableau. It's pretty impressive. There's, so there's a huge community around it. And so much of what I do, I've learned from other people. I mean, it's, there's not a whole lot of things I think I've done that are original. I just take you know cool things that I see other people doing and just tweak it. And you see a lot of that iteration that just goes on in the, the community. Somebody will create a node visualization and uh, the next person will come in behind them and optimize that and say, well, we could, if we, we could take advantage of data densification or some complex topic within Tableau and really greatly simplify the creation of these different things. And it really pushes the Tableau development too because when the developers see these really crazy visualizations like node circular diagrams, I imagine that gets the wheels turning in their heads and hey, we should probably make this easier. So not just people who are Zen masters or you know, super experts with Tableau can actually yep. achieve those things. That's fantastic, and I think that's something a lot of folks don't realize about Tableau, and I'm, I'm starting to learn more myself, is they're a very open community. Obviously, it's a, it's a private yeah. company and, yep. and all that, but when they release stuff, they do they do really look for customer feedback. They do really quickly iterate on that. Yeah. I think if they've got a great board, I don't know if you've been up to the third floor mm -hmm. with the board showing all the advancements, and they start with like two of them, you yeah. know, and I, I forget when the company was founded, 2005 or something, and then every year it like doubles. <laughs> and then yeah. at this one, it's like, I don't know, 20 or 30 different things they've released over this last year or so. Yeah. That's great, and, you're, uh, and I apologize, um, are, are people able to subscribe to the Tumblr that you put together, or is it pretty much for self-consumption? Or Yeah, they could just go to ugamarkj.tumblr.com, I believe it is, and then okay. they'll just start getting the stream, and they could subscribe in an app like Feedly and get, them update, get the updates every single day. Cool, cool. And do you, like, how much time do you find yourself keeping, keeping abreast of stuff, having to be up with the latest and greatest? Is it 30 minutes a week, is it an hour a week? It's probably about an hour a week. You know, a couple days a week, I'll open up my Feedly and just read through the stuff that's in there. And um, you know, the stuff that's interesting, I'll open it up and read it. There's, cool. there's too much content to try to read everything, but there's always something that kind of piques my interest. And so Got there'll it. be something for everybody, and they're all different levels. You eat the elephant by bites. <laughs> exactly. Bites per day. Exactly. Very cool. So what what type of data does Piedmont consume, particularly in, in your job, and how um, is it is it disparate data sources? Do you guys centralize it? What what does it look like? Yeah, it's all over the place. It's anything and everything we can get our hands on. Okay. Um, my group actually exists within financial planning and analysis, Got but it. we do a way broader set of analysis, and um, we're really the center of excellence for the entire organization. Really. Very cool. Uh, evangelizing Tableau, teaching people. I mean, I'd say probably 60% of our time is education of other users that are outside of finance. So we do cool. clinical data. Uh, we pull in patient satisfaction data from surveys. We do IT operations. We do business operations. Um, if you can think of it, we're probably tapping into it and okay. doing something with Tableau. You guys are crazy data. busy all over the place. Yeah, it's, it's, I think we're probably pushing 30 to 40 billion data points through Tableau every oh my day. Gosh. So it's, it's getting <laughs> pretty large. And how do you get, I'd imagine each team has to sort of specialize, like you said, um, in finance or whatever. Mm -hmm. How do you get the teams cross-pollinating? I know that can be a challenge. Yeah, I mean, so my background was not starting out in a, a system office kind of department. I, I was okay. within our Heart Institute group, and so I was just a normal business user Got it. when I started using this tool set. And I realized that you can't really have a corporate bottleneck in this process. What you really need to do right. is create a culture of self-service. You need to enable the people that are the business users that have the questions to be able to answer those questions on their own without relying on some technical expert. So that's one of the things I love about Tableau is it um, at the I mean, core level, it's just drag and drop things. And so you can do right. um, a lot of really good stuff without really knowing a whole lot about Tableau. But it's also extremely deep. So if you can imagine and dream it up, you can probably create it 
in Tableau. Um, actually, I'm, I'm revealing this a little bit later in one of my sessions, but okay. um, I went back through and uh, uh, actually created the game of Monopoly in Tableau <laughs> just to show that you can do crazy things. I love things. it. Tableau Monopoly. Or Tablopoly, maybe. <laughs> Tablopoly. <laughs> so what are some of the properties in Tablopoly? Um, yeah, they're all the same properties, the traditional uh, okay. properties that, that are in the normal <laughs> game. It's just that the board is a scatter plot, and I've got some line charts that actually show you history of you know, which player owned the most wealth over time. And that is hilarious. Little indicators as to what cards they own. So they'll move around the board when you hit the roll button. I'm sure that's one thing they didn't expect when they put the tool set together for you. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's one of the things that a lot cool. of the Zen Masters kind of do is, is take the tool and do something unexpected Absolutely. with it. Um, but like I said, I think it, it prompts the developers and gives them ideas as to how to take some of the crazy things that we do and uh, make them simpler so that Absolutely. they're more accessible to the broader range of people. Totally, and tons of crazy things happened at the uh, the keynote this morning. Lots of new announcements, lots of cool features. Mm -hmm. uh, it was hard yeah. for me to keep my pen moving fast enough to keep up with everything. What Absolutely. were what were some of the bigger ones that you saw being a, a day to day heavy duty practitioner of this? And so I think of things um, today a lot more in terms of the BI infrastructure as a whole and running okay. a BI program. I definitely get excited about a lot of the desktop enhancements and all the ease of use things, and that helps me with. Um, educating our users because they can do things um, easier. But I'm also thinking about it from, uh, you know, how difficult is it for me to manage the 30 to 40 billion data points that I'm pushing through the system right. today, and um, how do we optimize that? So I got excited about the the ability to do cross server joins of data. Yeah. So that's big, and we've we've kind of grown through acquisition at Piedmont and had different electronic healthcare record systems. So that means the data is sitting in lots of different databases. So Having the ability to go in and just connect this database and this database and run federated queries or even create extracts off of that, that's huge. And that's going to help a ton of people. Totally. And I would, I would imagine, I don't, don't have, even have to say imagine, I mean healthcare is a very compliance, regulation heavy environment. Mm -hmm. What are some of the features of Tableau that, that make your job easier from that perspective? Yeah, I mean, I think it helps us uh, monitor what's going on in our environment. It yep. certainly helps us, um, gives us a lot more visibility into the data set so that when we have audits come in, we, we know kind of what's coming and we know what the answers are going to, going to be ahead of time. Yep. Um, so different leapfrog surveys that, that come out and tell you, you know, how you're doing on different patient safety indicator, performance indicator things that we've got dashboards built around that today. So they update every single day so we would know, you know if, if there's an issue and it's going to land in the media or something you know, because right you're not performing well on it, we would know that ahead of time and hopefully you're correcting that before it would ever become an issue um, anyway. And I'd imagine you guys are, almost everything is in-house, on-prem, mm -hmm. yeah. stored. Yeah, we're a SQL Server heavy shop. Yep. And, um, have that all on-premise. And cool. And what were, did you have a chance to go through the, uh, the vendor booths, um, the Expo Center? Yeah, I've been through the, the vendor booths, and um, you know, I, I think Exasol is pretty intriguing. Um, Which one? Exasol. Exasol, okay. Yeah, so they're a parallel processing database analytics engine. So. I've seen demos with them running um, record sets with five billion records in it that wow. are live joined to five different tables with multi-million records in it oh and just kind of returning results immediately. So that's definitely a very impressive demo. Um, you know, kind of looking at the, the cool things that we want to do with the product, um, looking at we, our larger record sizes are um, 800 billion records at this point, but that's, that's just going to continue to grow. <laughs> and especially if we acquire more hospitals and things like that, We've got right. to be able to handle really massive amounts and parallel process that stuff to make it really performant. Absolutely, and big picture, doesn't even have to be in this conference, what are some of the things that excite you about the big data world, having your fingers in all these pies? It's just constantly changing. I mean, you, you always have to be on your toes, and I like that, I like learning new things, and there's so much going on in this space right now, and everything's going to change You know, five years, 10 oh, years yeah. from now, and you'll have to relearn things, and machine learning will become more prevalent, and you'll keep pushing things more to real time and trying to get prescriptive analytics. So, you know, we're doing a lot of, uh, you know, blocking and tackling right now and catching up, you know, yeah. the healthcare industry come to other industries who've kind of led the way. Um, so we're, we're making a lot of progress on that, but there's so much exciting stuff to come. That Absolutely. It, you know, I cool. can't wait to be a part of it. <laughs> and as somebody who's made the journey from you know, beginning user, you said three years ago, right? Is when you started? Yeah, so I, I've been at Piedmont five years and I was uh, two years as uh, in project management and business development. So the last three years have been running the BI program for Piedmont. Right, right. Somebody who's made the journey from starting, you know, had never seen Tableau before, 
to you know getting this this uh, yeah this all this knowledge about it. What what uh, what would you suggest that folks folks that want to get to that same level of understanding? How could they start out now? What what's some of the best? I think processes? passion drives a lot of it. I mean, if it's something that you're excited about, Point. you're going to spend time learning about it. I, I want to say it's 10,000 hours or something like that that Malcolm Gladwell says in one of his books is the, how much time you need to invest in something to really become top tier right. expert with it. I mean, it really does take a lot of just time. Like, I'm going to dig in here and I'm going to play with this until I figure it out. Uh, and, and if you're excited about the field and, and you love doing the work, that won't be such a burden on you. Absolutely. Totally agree. Mark, thank you so much for taking the time with us. Yeah. Is there, do you, so you, you said you, you have a session today? I do have a session, it's at uh, 2.15. 2 it's called I didn't so know you could right do that after in Tableau. Lunch. Yeah, it's actually <laughs> in the arena, so we, we were in there with the keynote, I was like, okay, this is really large. I'm Holy <laughs> cow, you're going to be in the arena, wow. You get yeah. the echo effect back while Yeah, and the giant screen, so. Fantastic, and, and the name of the talk? Uh, I didn't know you could do that in Tableau. <laughs> yes. With Monopoly. Tableau yeah, with, with Monopoly kind of at the tail end of it. So it would be Fantastic. I look forward to seeing that later. We'll be able to catch it today, but uh, hopefully some of our, some okay. of our viewers will. Great. Thanks cool. so much. Thanks so much for taking Appreciate time for with us, Mark. Thanks for having me. Excellent. Thanks. All right. Take care.